Back in 2012, I was a busy, active academic and mum. When I had time, I chilled out by playing a variety of puzzle games on my iPad or computer, and my mum, sisters and I enjoyed connecting by playing online Scrabble. During the year, I started cramping, and then tripping and falling, and my GP referred me to a neurologist for tests. Before we went back for results, we had a family summer holiday at Mum's, when we all stayed up much too late playing 500. On the 7th of January 2013, Denzel and I held hands in the neurologist's office as she gave us the devastating news that I have motor neuron disease. The neurologist explained that MMD is a progressive neurological disease affecting the motor neurons. As the nerve cells die our muscles weaken and shrink, and we progressively lose the ability to move, speak, swallow and breathe. The pace and order of change vary widely, but typically people die within two to three years. The clinic nurse eloquently described MND as a shit sandwich of a disease. It has progressively stolen my strong, active body so that now I am unable to move apart from my face, unable to speak, and struggling to swallow. I am incredibly lucky that nearly three years ago I was resuscitated from catastrophic respiratory failure, and given a tracheotomy, and since then a ventilator has breathed for me and kept me alive. As my arms grew weaker I needed armrests cradling my arms to use a computer keyboard and found it easier to manipulate an iPad on my lap. With increasing difficulty moving my hands I transitioned to a smaller tablet, and then phone, and abandoned games which required speed. Finally I became unable to even tap or swipe the screen. For a while I settled on giving suggestions as my husband and young daughter created fabulous worlds in Minecraft where I shared the fun problem solving, and appreciated the gorgeous design in a hands-free way, as our family bonded during collective games of Monument Valley. Hi everyone, my name is Ben O'Mara. I'm going to be talking with you now about why and how I started working with my team on this MND and video games project. Not long after I started working at Motor Neuron Disease Australia, my job I do as well as being an academic at Swinburne University, I began writing stories for the agency's blog, Spotlight on MND. I also started asking members of the MND community if they would like to contribute stories to the blog, including volunteers, scientists, advocates like the MND Genies, and of course, Kirsten Harley. It was while reading a story that Kirsten wrote about her experience with technology to communicate including playing video games, that I found myself asking why they were so important when dealing with such a difficult disease. Around the same time, I attended a workshop for allied health professionals who work with people living with MND. At the workshop, a presenter talked about the ways occupational therapists can help make it easier to use technology like smartphones, computers, and of course, video games, including the Xbox adaptive controller. The presentation in Kirsten's story made me realize that playing video games could help people living with MND better enjoy their time alone and with others. Being able to play video games meant having fun with loved ones and connecting with health professionals in a very profound and often unexpected way. Playing video games is a way of helping maintain something about life before MND, something loved, something part of identity. These are things that Kirsten writes about so well, often with great humor. I learned that while there are significant barriers to playing video games with MND, there are also important opportunities for making them easier to play. So I got in touch with Kirsten, people who work in video games, academics and health practitioners to see what we might be able to work on together. As word spread around the traps, Matt, Natasha and Kirsten all came back to me to say how much they valued the idea and with amazing ideas themselves on what we could do. We decided to work on a scoping review 
Our thinking was that a scoping review will help bring together an evidence base and figure out what specific areas of research and practice can help make it easier for people living with MND to play video games. With a better understanding of the evidence, our hope is that we can publish the findings and build on them to apply for funding to do a project that will help people living with MND to play more inclusive video games. I believe that by researching ways of making video games more inclusive, it could provide another important option for people living with MND to do something they enjoy, spend rewarding time with others, and create memories together during a very difficult time. My name's Tash, and I'm taking you through our methodology, how we're exploring this topic. So first up, we're undertaking a scoping review. We're seeing what is out there already in the academic and industry work. And we're looking for approaches that make it easier for people living with MND to play video games. Our first step was to identify keywords that we could use to be able to search databases. We're looking for keywords that gave us appropriate coverage and also gave us a manageable amount of work to be able to get across. We ended up including material that was not just health focused because we wanted to take in insights from a range of industries. And a big friend, thank you to Franzi at Melbourne Uni. She helped us develop our keywords and also with the syntax that we need to use to be able to uh, communicate with databases and be able to pull out the articles that we want. So this is where we ended up with our keywords, a study population of people living with or affected by MND, including their family and carers, or people living with a very similar neurological or neuromuscular condition, uh, the type of interventions are studies aiming to increase use and access of IT <coughs> for people to be able to, with MND, to be able to play video games. And the type of articles we are coming across can uh, be quantitative, for instance, survey material that's being used as the basis of the data, qualitative data, such as semi-structured interviews, and reports on proto developments or testing of UX setups. And we have been searching these databases. We're looking at Swinburn, PubMed and ACM portal. We're almost got all our material out of PubMed, about 1800 artic academic articles. And after that, we're going to start investigating the grey literature. So our observations so far, brain computer interface, BCI, features prominently. Uh, and we want to keep that in the mix because we want to see that this technology that's mostly used for health uh, purposes only might be able to be afford new ways of playing games. Machine learning is a term that's gaining traction in the literature and video game, according to the lecturers, to literature is defined as VR, console and gaming software. I now use the Neuronode to operate my iPhone. The Neuronode's three electrodes are attached to the skin over a muscle in my hand and pick up the impotent electrical signal my brain sends when I try to twitch my thumb. The signals are sent to my iPhone by Bluetooth and use the phone's inbuilt switch control function so I can choose and use apps, including games, as well as scrolling through the keyboard and selecting letters to type and speak. It's remarkable life transforming technology. As my MND has progressed I have lost not only my functioning body, but more and more of the activities I previously enjoyed as well as control over much of my life. Being able to use the neural node to play games gives me a pleasurable leisure activity which I can share with my family, as well as autonomously. I'm excited about working with Ben, 
Matt and Tash to scope out the research towards making video games more inclusive for the MNB community.